Welcome to Deep Dive Defense, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. Today's topic is Iran's Shahed-171 drone, based on the secret of US RQ-170's Sentinel. In late 2011, Iran succeeded in capturing one of the most advanced drones of its time, the US RQ-170 Sentinel, to the surprise of the world. This drone, produced by Lockheed's elite Skunk Works Division, renowned for handling high-end and secretive military and intelligence projects, was designed for the challenging role of reconnaissance and surveillance operations in contested airspace. To achieve this capability, the RQ-170 employed a flying wing design similar to the B-2 bomber. Coupled with its advanced turbofan engine, this design allowed the drone to fly at comparatively high altitudes while being difficult to detect. Its low observable shape characteristics were enhanced by extensive use of radar-absorbing materials and structures. By the 2010s, U.S. designers were aware that some of their adversaries had developed capabilities to detect even its most advanced stealth designs. As a result, the RQ-170 was also designed to be a relatively low-cost asset, making its loss in combat more acceptable. The RQ-170 could operate undetected in the airspace of most countries, providing valuable intelligence, such as during the operation, to assassinate Osama bin Laden in Pakistan. However, Iran, viewing the United States as its primary adversary, had taken significant efforts to counter low-observable U.S. aircraft. Despite this, in 2011, U.S. decision-makers deemed it feasible to conduct a reconnaissance mission over Iranian airspace from Afghanistan, believing that Iran's eastern regions were sufficiently low-protected to slip through. Hence the RQ-170 took off from Kandahar, Afghanistan, and headed towards Iranian airspace. As a global superpower, the United States utilized Space-Based Electronic Intelligence ELINT, to detect radar emissions and locate ground radar positions and observe activity. Additionally, assets like the RQ-4 Global Hawk provided airborne ELINT and standoff synthetic aperture radar data of ground activity. These tools gave U.S. planners a detailed electronic order of battle and confidence that Iran lacked the necessary radar coverage in the region where the RQ-170 would intrude. Even if Iran could detect the RQ-170, it was believed that they lacked an air defense system within range and capable of successfully engaging the high-flying, low-radar cross-section drone. The precise details of how Iran managed to capture the RQ-170 nearly intact remain unclear. However, the most plausible scenario involves Iranian sensors detecting previous RQ-170 activity near or inside its airspace and setting an ambush. This likely involved an electronic warfare operation that jammed the drone's satellite data link and employed GPS spoofing to lower its altitude, causing it to crash land in a suitable plane area. This successful operation provided Iran with access to the then state-of-the-art RQ-170 Sentinel made by the Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works Division. Despite the interest from global aerospace players like Russia and China, Iran chose not to share the captured drone. Instead, they used the captured technology to advance their own aerospace and drone capabilities, which were still in unsophisticated stages in the early 2010s. The IRGC Aerospace Force affiliated Shahed Industries undertook the task of reverse engineering the captured RQ-170 drone under the project name Shahed-171. However, it was evident from the start that, given Iran's potential adversaries, particularly the United States, even a successful one-to-one -one replication of the RQ-170 would have limited survivability in a high-intensity conflict. Although the drone could exploit vulnerabilities in an opponent's integrated air defense system when provided with a high-quality electronic battle space map, it would still be vulnerable to airborne high-power radars and thermal sensors. Moreover, the drone's advanced and comparatively costly components, such as the FJ-33 turbofan engine, were beyond Iran's immediate capability to reverse engineer. Consequently, the reverse engineering effort was divided into three distinct variants. The first variant aimed to continue the full-scale replication of the RQ-170, designated as Shahed-171, by seeking an alternative interim propulsion solution that Iran could master and produce in a reasonable time frame. The second variant was a 60% scaled-down version that would use propulsion systems available to Iran or those that could be produced in sufficient quantities soon. 
The two variants of it, Shahed-181 and Shahed-191, were designed to be expendable, featuring significantly lower costs and benefiting from its reduced radar and thermal signature due to its smaller scale. The third variant was a reconnaissance and surveillance model scaled to 40% of the original Sentinel's size. The two variants of it, Shahed-161 and Shahed-141, aimed to develop an expendable airborne sensor with minimized detectability, leveraging its flying wing design and small size for very low observability. Each of the subscale variants and its subsequent sub-variant, which replaced the jet propulsion with a propeller-driven design, further reduced costs and enhanced expendability. This propulsion change traded lower cruise speed for increased endurance and range. The reverse engineering efforts first began with such subscale variants, laying the groundwork for the project. Politically, the full-scale Shahed-171 served as a statement of Iran's resolve to make the United States violation of its airspace to come at a cost by utilizing captured technology to enhance its own drone capabilities. Prototypes of both full-scale and subscale variants were showcased in 2014, less than three years after the Sentinel's capture. Although test flight footage of the subscale variants was released during this period, the first public footage of the full-scale Shahed 171's flight and landing appeared only in 2016. Interestingly, by 2016, it became evident that Iran had shifted its primary focus from the full-scale Shahed 171 to the 60% subscale variants, the turbojet-powered Shahed 191 and the Wankel engine Shahed 181. By that time, Iran had successfully mastered the production of both propulsion systems, resulting in a highly cost-effective drone family. This new family of drones capitalized on the RQ-17 Sentinel's advanced flying wing technology, offering enhanced stealth and significant capabilities at a reduced cost. The Shahed-171 was developed using various Iranian solutions to enable the creation of full-scale variant of the RQ-170. Though it was lower performing than the original US design, it was significantly cheaper to produce by avoiding high-end solutions that were either not available to Iran, beyond its industrial capabilities of the mid-2010s, or cost prohibitive. One of the major challenges in creating the Shahed-171 was developing a suitably powerful propulsion system. Although Iran initiated a project to reverse-engineer the FJ-33 turbofan engine of the RQ-170, it was clear from the beginning that such an endeavor would take many years to complete and to be produced at an economically acceptable cost. Instead, Iran opted to utilize an existing turbojet engine that it had been producing since the late 1990s, the TRI-60, known locally as the Tolue. Iran's extensive experience with this engine, coupled with its ongoing production, led to the development of the Tolue-14, reported to be a low-cost turbofan engine designed to power the Shahed-171. The Tolue 14 has never been seen, but is believed to feature an unusual aft turbofan design, which can be simpler to implement than a conventional turbofan engine. There were rumors that the RQ-170's propulsion system included an electric fan stage in front of the turbofan engine to increase pressure ratio at high altitudes. But whether this system really existed and was replicated in the Shahed 171 remains unknown. It is known that the kinematic performance of the Shahed-171 is inferior to the U.S. original, primarily due to its less powerful engine. The Shahed-171 has a flight ceiling of 12 kilometers compared to over 13 kilometers for the RQ-170 and a slightly lower speed. The cruder and cheaper propulsion solution also results in a reduced range of 2,200 kilometers, about 1,000 kilometers less than the RQ-170. In terms of optical surveillance, the RQ-170 is also believed to be superior, with its multispectral sensor offering significant standoff range. The Iranian solutions are considered less powerful, particularly because the drone operates at high altitudes, increasing the distance to the targets it observes. Additionally, the airframe features for low observability in the Shahed-171 are presumed to be less sophisticated than those of the higher-cost RQ-170 design. In summary, concerns about survivability against powerful adversaries and the lack of an advanced standoff sensor package seem to be the main reasons why the Shahed-191 and 181 are favored by the Aerospace Force for operational service, while the Shahed-171 has apparently not entered service beyond testing and evaluation.
Despite this, both the RQ-170 and the Shahed-171 possess the capability to carry a useful payload in the form of guided bombs or standoff missiles, and reportedly feature a payload bay that can be used for that purpose. However, the comparatively low survivability against advanced adversaries and the high costs of the full-scale Shahed-171 made the subscale 60% variants more attractive for strike missions. In 2020, Iran revealed that it was working on a copy of the FJ-33 turbofan engine. By the early 2000s and 20s, Iran had also significantly advanced its sensor systems, including synthetic aperture radars with a range of up to 140 kilometers and long-range thermal cameras suitable for high-altitude operations and standoff distances. This development suggests that an advanced version of the Shahed-171 might be under development, aiming to serve as a standoff sensor platform with higher survivability compared to drones like the Shahed-149 Gaza. This capability would be particularly valuable for Iran in ISR operations at sea, enabling the detection of adversary vessels at standoff ranges while remaining relatively difficult to detect. Reports have also indicated the potential for a scaled-up version of the Shahed-171, possibly using two or more of Iran's Jahesh 700 engines, which are copies of the RQ-170's FJ-33 turbofan. Such a manned or unmanned bomber variant could be equipped with standoff missiles like the Arman or Zohair in their air-launched variants, allowing the drone to stay at a safe distance from threats while delivering aeroballistic missiles. However, the high costs associated with such an aircraft may deter Iran from pursuing this project seriously. The capture of the advanced low observable flying wing drone in 2011 allowed Iran to master the inherently unstable design of flying wings and acquire technology for a relatively low cost and efficient turbofan engine in the form of the Jahesh 700. With over a decade of experience in mastering various subsystems, the Aerospace Force is likely to utilize these technologies and components beyond the currently produced 60% subscale variants. While the low observability feature provided by a flying wing layout may not justify the development of a large-scale drone, the aerodynamic efficiency and kinematic performance of such a design are clear benefits. Thus, while the stealth and very low observable aspects may be secondary, the long range and high altitudes enabled by a flying wing aircraft remain attractive features for Iran. A long range variant with a combat radius of several thousand kilometers may be seen as a necessary capability, allowing the aircraft to circumvent potential adversaries and attack from unexpected, less defended vectors where ballistic missile early warning radars may not be directed at. As Iran's industry develops the capacity to produce a more attractive variant of the RQ-170, either as a survivable standoff sensor platform, or as a carrier of air-launched aeroballistic missiles in an upscaled bomber form, mastering the technology of the Shahed-171 in 2016 will serve as a foundation for future developments. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.